All right, uh, table of contents, multiplying fractions. It's going to be one page. If you don't remember how to multiply fractions, you're going to be super excited because it's so much easier than adding or subtracting fractions. Make sure you get it written. Remember, you can pause, fast forward, rewind at any point uh, if you get ahead or get left behind. All right, I want you to um, go ahead and write this down right here. Uh, the top is a fraction. It's actually two fr fractions. Numerator times numerator. Denominator times denominator. Going straight across. Then I've got two models there. One is two-fourths on the left, and the one on the right is three-eighths. So go ahead and get that drawn. You can pause it now. All right, so when multiplying fractions, here's what happens. Okay, think about denominators. It's how many parts it takes to make a whole. So we're taking the 4 and 2 fours and the 8 and 3 eighths and multiplying that to create even more parts that it takes to make a whole. So this model over here has 32 parts. Feel free to count them. They're not perfectly equal, but it has 32 parts. Okay, so that's what's happening. It's just getting sliced and sliced and sliced and sliced. Okay, so then... We multiply the numerator, and which is 2, just 2 times 3. I still have my straight arrow thingy on, which is just 2 times 3. That is 6. So that just means that 6 of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So it's 6 out of 32. So first, the, 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 the numerator, the amount of parts that you have is getting larger. Okay, you're getting more parts. But then when you multiply the denominators, that means that the, the, the higher the denominator, the smaller the parts. Do you notice that? Notice that in the first one, force, kind of large parts, and then it goes to 8, and gets even smaller, right? And now if you look at 30 seconds, it's even smaller, okay? Um, all right, so that's what it looks like visually, okay? Now when it's just numbers, and by the way, you don't have to draw that six, I don't think I told you that. You don't really have to draw that uh, model with the 30 seconds on it, okay? All right, so now let's just start with some numbers, okay? Um, multiplying is easy, uh, which is great, right? Because math sometimes can be so stinking hard. So let's do, um, let's just start with one-third times three-eighths. One way that some people like to write it is like, is like this. It's one times three and 3 times 8. It's just two simple multiplication problems. Okay, So 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, So um, we've got to uh, think, uh, can we simplify that? So does 3 and 24 have something in common? Um, uh, do they have a multiple in common? Uh, so if you skip count by 3's, uh, will you get to 24? Uh, you actually will. So to simplify, you're going to just divide by the same thing. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, so your final answer is 1 8. Um, let's do uh, number 2. Number 2. Let's do number 2. Let's do 1 6 1 6 times a negative 6 ninth. Okay, don't freak out with the um, uh, with the negative sign. So the signs are different, right? We have a positive and a negative. Think of your faces. Uh, anytime that the eyes on those faces looked different, uh, that made our answer negative. So I'm going to go ahead and put my negative in there now. And then all you do is multiply straight across. Okay, if you liked uh, this right here, you can do that. 
All right, so, but otherwise, we're just going straight across. 1 times 6 is 6. And 6 times 9 is, uh, well, 9 times 5 is 45. And 9 more is 54. Okay, so it's negative 6 54s. Uh, but we need to recognize that uh, they are both even, all right? Um, and 6, let's see here, does 6 go into 54 uh, an even amount of times? Uh, well, yeah, actually, because didn't we just do 6 times 9 right there? So, yeah, so that means they have a 6 in common, so they can both be divided by 6, so we can simplify. So don't forget that negative sign over there. That happens a lot. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. And 54 divided by 6 is 9. So that's negative 1 9 All right, so uh, we can also, what's called cross simplify. Some of you will like this a lot. Um. So before we get a problem, you know what? Let's look. We're gonna do we're gonna do number two again, okay? Except for we're gonna call it three. <laughs> um, so if we cross simplify, when you have a problem that is uh, multiplying, watch this. I'm gonna take one sixth, and we're multiplying it by a negative six ninths. Right? We already know our answer is negative. Okay, so I am going to look diagonally. Let me get a different color so it actually sticks out better. I'm going to look diagonally and see if the numbers that are diagonal have anything in common. Well, 6 and 6, they have 6 in common, don't they? So here's what's going to happen. I am going to simplify those diagonally. And so this is now a 1. That is now a 1. Okay? We simplified, cross, simplified. Okay? So our new problem is 1 6 times negative 1 9 And 1 times 1, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's not 1 6 I made it a 1. It's 1 once times negative one ninth. Well, what's anything times one? It's itself. Okay. We will, we're going to do some more. All right, number four, write this problem down. Negative 16 times one fourth. So some of you right now are thinking, well, negative 16 is not a fraction. Well, we have a way to make it a fraction. Okay, how many holes do we have? We have negative 16, right? Um, well, technically, negative 16 is an integer, okay? But, so, do we know how many parts it takes to make a hole on negative 16? We actually don't. So, we can actually choose what it is, okay? Now, the easiest way to do that is to just put a 1 underneath it. So, now, it takes one part to make a hole, all right? And we have 16 of them, okay? Okay? So anytime you have a whole number, or an integer in this case, just put a 1 underneath it, okay? All right, so I want to do that cross-simplifying again. Obviously, 1 and 1 have something in common, but what about right there? Negative 16 and 4. What do they have in common? They have 4 in common. So we can simplify by dividing by 4, right? So... That would be 1. And how many times does 4 go into 16? 4 times. So what is our problem now? Negative 4 over 1 times 1 over 1. So for those of you that really hate large simplifying, this cross simplifying helps a ton. Okay, it's smaller numbers, it's easier. So now let's just multiply directly across. A negative times a positive is a negative. 4 times 1 is 4. And 1 times 1 is 1. Well, what do we end up with? We have a negative. And 4, don't forget this little fraction sign, just means to divide. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 
So our answer is negative 4. Um, don't overcomplicate multiplying fractions. Uh, the next video will be uh, assignment help.